person leaving his house before Pesach. I'm reading it straightforward so there will be no confusions and no, and no, uh, no machloko. This is straight from Yalkut Yosef. It's a person who leaves his house. If he has in his mind to come back during the, uh, towards the Pesach or during the Pesach, we are concerned that he might come actually in Erev Pesach and he's not going to have time to check. Therefore, when he goes before Pesach, since there is a concern, he needs to check beforehand uh, before he leaves the house. But if he has in mind to come back after Pesach, and he's living within 30 days of Pesach, even so, chayav livdo, you have to check. And if you leave 30 days before Pesach, and tzarich livdo, you don't have to check. And if there is a doubt whether he's going to come around Pesach or not, those who say, that those who you need to check, and those who shouldn't check. So far, so good. It's pretty clear. This is for all those uh, lonely people who like to go and experience Pesach like, uh, I don't know what, like they never experienced Pesach before in hotels and other, other chazariah that they, they go over there. This is a very bad way to experience Pesach. The best way to experience Pesach is in your house, where you are the king and you are the melech and your kids are sitting around you and you see the bracha of your family around you. Don't be lazy. By the way, if you go with a family to spend all your money over there for Pesach, you have a family of eight kids or somebody like this goes out, don't come complain to me you don't have money for yeshiva. Right? Don't, don't complain. How much is it going right now? $5,000 a head? You know how many cows you can buy with this? You know, you can send your kid for yeshiva for a year with that. But for that you have money. Why? Because you want to serve like an illusion. You know, the Mishugayim, no normal. I wish I'm going to tell you, Bichlal, altogether, there is a big concern regarding those places for Kashut and Pesach. A big concern. This very, 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 you have to be very, very careful who exactly you pick. And it's just an unbelievable, you know, apparatus you have to put in place to go to a hotel. And the guy comes a week before, he catches the whole thing, where the pots, where the this. Impossible. I would not eat in a place like this. That's A. B, when you go to Pesach to some hotel in Florida, and then you're going to go to the beach over there with your golden chains all over there, sitting on the sofa, come on, is a buffoon. Right? You're going to tell me that's Kedusha of the Chag? You're going to see women there like Chava in Gan Eden? That's Kedusha of the Chag? That's a Kedusha. What's your million of problems of, of, of Kashrut or Chilul Shabbat and who knows what? Anyway, but let's go. Let's say you're one of those people who do that. <clears throat> if you don't leave anybody in your house to check the Chametz and Erev Pesach and you're not coming back until after Pesach, Af al pi ken, even though you're not going to be there, Tzarich Livdok et Chametz. You don't have to make a bracha on that. So if within 30 days before Pesach, if you go out of your house, the day that you go, you have to check. Argument take, Purim was two weeks ago. Let's say I'm going now and I'm not going to come back until after Pesach. Okay, the day I leave is the day I need to check for Hametz. No, without a bracha. And you're leaving your house Erev Pesach for the whole Pesach. When you signing the Chametz sale to the rabbi, you're selling the whole entire house with the Chametz. Yes, Shomrim, there are those who say, She'afal piken chayav livdok et ha-chametz belel yud dalen. You have to sell the chametz and the night of the 14th. Why? She'are e'en ha-mechira chala, e'la le-macharat. The sale is not going to take place on the 14th day. And you're living on the 14th night. Umimele, and in any case, in the night of the 14th, ha-chametz ha-dayin shelo, umichoyav livdok. There is chametz in your possession. Guess what? You got to check. There are those who cholek. 
ואומרים שאינה בכלל תקנה and so on and so forth. ויש אומרים שנכון להחמיר, it is appropriate to be מחמיר, not to sell all the bedrooms in your house, וישאיר חדר אחד and leave one room, ויבדוק חדר זה בברכה and check that room with a ברכה, ומיד אחר הבדיקה and immediately after the בדיקה check the rest of the rooms on account of the ברכה that you made ואז שהעיקר לדינה להקל, even though we try to be making on that, שאין צריך לבדוק אותו אחר, you don't have to check that room. בכל מקום, in any case, באופן כזה, in such a case, עדיף למכור את החמץ ביום יום ג' you should sell your חמץ on the 13th. So if you think that you're going to go to the Pocanos, <coughs> or you're going to go to Florida, or whatever else you're going to go to, and you don't have to clean your house up, you don't have to kosher your sink if you're coming back after the Pesach. You don't have to kosher your sink, you don't have to kosher your stove, but you need to clean it. You need to clean your house, and you need to put on the chametz, and you need to sell the chametz, and you need to check it. You can't just leave like this and say, okay, I'm doing bitul, and so on and so forth. Because the bdikai is applied upon you once the night of the 14th comes, and you have chametz in your possession. And as you could see, 30 days before, and if you left, you still have to check. So the bdika for Pesach have to be checked. You need to clean, take all the chametz, sweep the floor, and put it away, throw it to the side. You don't have to kosher this and so on. However, if you're coming back, or there is a chance that you might come back during the Pesach, you have to kosher the Pesach like you've been eating there. Questions on that? Good to go? Part two. Regarding restaurants, I really doubt... I really doubt that any restaurants that sell chametz during the year is reliable enough to kosher its premises and utensils and everything and to serve kosher food the Pesach. I doubt it. In Israel or any other place that they have a solid and reliable hashgacha, Those places are closed. They're closed for a week. They're closed for a week. To stand, I mean, let's say, for example, let's say you have a, I don't know, a, an Italian restaurant where they sell pasta and, and stuff like this. There's flour all over the place. To co I mean, as it is in your house, it's hard to clean it. In an industrial place, when there is magnitude of, of flour and chametz all over the place, it's impossible. I don't know how they do it. I don't know how to do it. My recommendation for you, Listen, you guys do whatever you want. My recommendations to you is don't be lazy. Clean up at home. Cook at home. And don't rely on questionable things. Because if I'm going to tell you in any other aspect of your life, well, this is not really to begin with. This is quite questionable. I don't think you'll do it. So when it comes to Pesach, don't be lazy. You end up paying for it. Chazal tells us. The Ari tells us. The Ari HaKadosh. The call a makpid, any person who is careful in chametz be pesach be mashu, he does his best to clean what you can. Muftach lo sheino ba takana leyado kol hashana be machalot azurim. It means that all year long he has a guarantee that he's not going to have any kind of a problem with kosher food. I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it.